All right, so we got team two saved and ready to rock and roll. Let's go. Uh, who's got it? Faffy. This is not our game, guys. Don't break people's hearts and pick stuff that isn't uh, the role, the rule of the game. Also, you can um, you can build whatever item path you want. There's no there's no rules on what items you have to build in what order. You can build whatever role you want. So. <clears throat> I'm Ladies just saying. Gentlemen. Welcome okay, so... to game number three. And people are talking about Ray's beard. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> my guess is that Zed is going to be banned out pretty soon. Basically any assassin AD scaler should be banned away. Um, I'm expecting Zed and Yasuo to be taken off the table. Uh, Talon, okay. Uh, Darius, definitely a good ban out as well. Aurelia probably will be taken off the table at some point. Yep, yeah, there's the dead ban. Um, the full lethality is just too good, especially with n no one being able to build armor. Um, by the way, guys, tabbies are going to come at a premium this game. You can buy <laughs> any boots you want. Buy freaking tabbies. I left that in there just for that particular piece of it. I didn't want to force people to build only attack speed boots. You can build whatever you want on boots and ninja tabbies. I feel I was going to be... A lot. It's gonna be ninja tabbies or attack speed. Ninja but, um, tabbies or you get reported. Um, <laughs> so Yasuo taken off the table as well as Talon. Exactly what I was expecting to see. More of oh, those yeah. AD assassins. Ye getting knocked off as well. People that can one shot you if they get enough damage. Um, I'm perhaps looking towards some Ginsu's Rage Blade builds that might be interesting to see. Um, Lee Sin is the final one. There are definitely better champions that could have been taken away. Lee Sin, Cosmos. There is the Pantheon. Kogma would actually be terrible to take off the table right now because his item path is not AD based, it's on hit. Um,. Lee Sin, um, Pantheon picked up, and Aurelia. Mm. Yeah, I was hoping to see that last slot where Lee Sin was aimed toward Aurelia. Jin is picked up. I love seeing that Jin, the premier AD scaler in the game, can build all AD and just loves it. I'm looking to see Ginsu's Rage Blaze. So, the build that I think I would go. Essence Reaver, Infinity Edge. Shoot, what else after that? I'd probably pick up um, Ginsu's Rage Blade and then Death's Dance, optimally. Rengar, definitely an excellent ban. Rengar, super powerful with lots of AD and crit. Um, I'm gonna kill you, Jake. Um, anyway. I think you need a little more loss of hair right here, and you would look really, really similar with the beard. Just saying. Just, just saying. But, uh, banning away some of those junglers, Rengar and the Wukong. I guess Wukong's more of a top laner, but still pinching those yeah, jungler yeah, tools. Yeah, gonna ban away the Kha'Zix as well. The last ban, I'm gonna guess, you is for 80 roll, and it's the Scion. Yeah. I was wondering if that was gonna be let through or banned. And so it is banned away by Blue Team. This is when was free casting in this game. Uh, I don't know. I mean, he doesn't quite have enough puns. Oh, and here's the cane. Nova, this is the game for you. Catnator locking in the cane this game. Can go the dark one around. And Faffy playing Leona. Okay, okay, okay. I gotta talk really quick about this. I was actually hopeful for this. Leona, there's some items in the game that you can build as a Leona that are underneath the AD damage tree. And yet, she still has that hard CC that locks people down. You can go as well, like AD Leona top lane, but Guardian's Angel is one of those items that's underneath the, the AD listing. Um, and just the fact that she has that point and click CC, I think is gonna come in huge in this game. I'm looking to see Jarvan. Mm. Okay, you could do Thunderbolt Jarvan, who just one shots you, or you could do the tanky Jarvan, which uh, revolves around getting a lot of HP and a Titanic Hydra. Gives you a little bit more, um, less burst potential, but a lot more uh, more survivability. Nong Nong picking up Warwick, who's basically free low at this point. Um, Corky, a beautiful pickup by Lord Reeves brilliant because everyone's going to be buying tabbies to counter out the attack damage 
Quirky, on the other hand, takes all that AD that he wants to build up and then converts it into magic damage. So good diversified threat, good on the spot pickup from Lord Reeves. I'm surprised to see that Ezreal was the one picked up, not Misfortune. <clears throat> Misfortune loves going straight AD. Her build. Yeah, you often see Misfortune. If at all possible. Lethality. If it all po no, le lethality's old old news on her. Old school. Um, lethality doesn't work very well on ADC since they nerfed it specifically toward those people. Um, she now goes Essence Reaver into Infinity Edge and then picks up Rapid Fire Cannon because it's nice to get your love tap off onto them. Um, however, the thing is, with the new Conqueror, she's the, she's one of the ADCs who uses Conqueror fairly well. Her and Draven, really. Um, she just wants to build as much AD as possible because her abilities scale crazily well off of uh, off of the off of AD. So, surprise, Ezreal was picked up. He doesn't like AD quite as much as some of the others, but Trinity Force does technically build out of an AD. Uh, out of yeah. an Let's roll through the players and the champions real quick for the blue team, Team Dan's game. We've got Bananas taking the Pantheon in the top lane. We've seen him play Pantheon once before, and he wrecked. Did a really good job with that. Smoochie Bear on the Irelia, most likely for the mid lane. I'm here to stack, taking Jin in the bottom lane AD carry roll. Faffy on Leona support. And last but not least, Nong Nong on his Warwick, but taking him into the jungle. Over for Team Frankers. Give it away, Wraith. All right. For Team Frankers, we've got Straight Jacket on the Ezreal in the bottom lane ADC role. We've got Lord Reeves picking up Corky in the mid lane. Sail it, Keldoran, formerly known as Keldoran, on Thresh in the bottom lane supportive role. Catnator in the jungle on Kane and Six Paths Sage Mode on Jarvan the Fourth, presumably in the top lane. All right, so between these two teams, I'm giving a pretty hefty favor over to team dan's game simply because of the Jin leona uh i mean i really engage there's so much opportunity to lock down chain cc and get some kills but that doesn't mean that frankers is completely out i mean the kane jarvan thresh you're talking about a massive pick comp massive lane mobility from the corky able to rotate to lanes Thresh and Kane both get some good CC even in AoE areas and uh, with the Jarvan lock of that ultimate, if he's building straight damage, he's just going to be executing the Jin from half health across the lane. Yeah, so the main thing I'm looking at here is that every single member of Dan's game has one or more uh, forms of CC. Um, hard CC, not just slows. So Warwick has the suppression and a fear. You've got Leona, who has three different stuns. You've got Jin, who's got a spear. <coughs> Aurelia has a stun, mm -hmm. as well as a disarm. And Pantheon has his point-and-click stun. So all of these members have some way to lock people down. Their pick comp is absolutely unreal. Now, Corky of course has a decent amount of mobility you've got ezreal who has an excellent amount of mobility as well as the cooldown getting reduced every time he lands a q um this is going to be crucial to get to keeping these champions from being just insta killed uh, and cc locked and then blown up um however if pantheon gets onto someone the main reason Pantheon falls off late game is because people start getting armor and he starts dueling less damage. In a straight up squishy versus squishy game, Pantheon never really falls off. Um, because he can blow up a squishy just as well in the late game as he can in the early game. Um, looking at Catinator in the jungle, depending on whether he decides to go red cane or blue cane, he'll either be one-shotting people or acting as kind of that mid-frontline tanky member, um, which might be nice to see in a game with so much AD flying around. So, just off the top of your head, who do you think's gonna win? I'm not gonna be able to watch for a moment because I got bug splatted, but I should be able to reload into the game for a moment. I do want to give it heavily over to Dan's game to be able mm -hmm. to take that win just because of that chain CC like we talked about. However, the one worry from Frankers is if they can get the snowball going on early enough in the game, that could be very dangerous for them. Mm -hmm.
I'm definitely looking to see this Kane get snowballing. If Kane gets too far ahead, he might be able to put all of the lanes behind. And at that point, even though they do have CC for disengage, they won't be able to just straight up lock everyone down. But another right. reason I what like it. What you can Dan do real quick, I just want to comment very quickly, is that you can actually go back to the beginning of the game and just hit pause and wait for me to reload into the game. Uh, I think you'll end up coming in in the same spot as me. Oh, that's true. That's true. If we just let it roll, I suppose, because I'm going to load in not from the beginning of the game. And mm -hmm. that's a fair point. Fair point. Yeah. So. Another reason I would like to give this mm. over to Dan's Gaming is the fact that they have Jin over Ezreal. Ezreal, while a decent champion right now, um, with the AD only restriction, um, Jin just uses straight AD better than Ezreal does. As a champion, his passive gives him more out of that AD than otherwise uh, than an Ezreal would get, who really wants attack speed as well as AD. Bananas. Um, trading pretty heavily with six path in the top lane another spear lands and once he hits level two i'm expecting to see this all in smooch bear getting a little bit of trade down from lord reeves um you're expecting to see the range uh champion dominate the melee champion right now reeves playing this lane correctly uh we did not see it played well as a uh, in the last game with the ari however lord reeves respecting the low minions and almost baiting Smooch Bear to come in on him right now when he has level advantage. Uh, Lord Reeves getting another press the attack trade off as well as the Phosphorus Bomb and two more autos. Really punishing Smooch Bear. And Ooh, the all shot onto hit. the Ezreal. Look at the CC as well. The lock from Leona. Man, this is feeling very familiar to uh, our solo or duo queue games last year when we were playing this in the bottom lane so often in ranked mode. The combination of the Leona engage followed up by Jin's uh, snare combination can add so much power because oftentimes people forget the passive of that Leona means that any auto attack follow is going to deal extra damage and uh, take away that stack of sunlight. In the top lane, J Jarvan actually pushed out of the lane um, back underneath his own turret. Yeah. Jarvan is in danger of getting uh, getting all in and killed again. Uh, Kane is on this side of the map, but Warwick is as well. Nong Nong coming in, and it looks like Banana's going to start it. Oh, the fear down. Is it going to be enough Kane here as well? That's going to be the Jarvan following, but so does the Pantheon. First blood over to Catenator. I'm sorry, actually, Nong Nong got first blood. Catenator just picked up second. But is uh, Nong Nong going to get away with this? That's the question. As the turret shot almost takes him out, but doesn't quite kill him. In the meantime, in the mid lane, Smoochie Bear underneath a 200 health. Uh, might be a non underneath 100, but has no potions, so may need to back off. And it does look like that aggressive start with the dagger is going to be an early recall for the Yeah, Yeah. Um Something incredibly important to note right there is how Nong Nong played that final dive. Um, he got out with a tiny amount of health, and the reason for that is he had a crazy good awareness. Um, he backed off there for a second, as you noticed, and actually uh, teed his teammate off pretty good who started spam pinging him. But the reason he did that is he had red buff. He would have triggered tower aggro if he walked one more step forward. So he clicks back, waits for red buff to wear off. He knows all he needs is one Q to kill the person. So there's no danger of Kane getting away. He backs off, waits for tower aggro to drop so he wouldn't get it. And then walks in, secures the kill, and gets out with very minimal amounts of health. Okay, so it looks like uh, there's some confusion in the lane in, in the game at the moment but we'll forgive it on both sides because i need to learn again we're learning about this guys as not nice gonna find cat nader chase him over the wall that was a beautiful cue there from the warwick however he's needing to get by lord reason on now getting low health and the exhaust is going to guarantee his death so despite a really good chase by the warwick went in a little too deep and corky gonna be able to pick up his first kill of the game so i will have to keep in mind again we're still learning guys we're still learning but I need to keep track of potions, whether or not people are allowed to use them, and then uh, starting items of the Doran shield. If I was to redo this, I would say your starting item has to be within the AD uh, rule, the AD build path, but corrupting potion is allowed as potions in their entirety are allowed. So that is just a lesson for the future games. So do we force I, leaves I'd to uh, sell a shield? I don't know. 
No, I'd say I'd say any starting item's fine because there are some champions who can't make it through laning phase with say without say a D rank. So there's no sense oh, in you know un unfairly handicapping somebody for by denying them their starting item. I mean, if we're gonna let well, anybody it depends do. on what game mode we play. Again, the, I'm gonna be coming up each week. I'm gonna come up with a new game mode for game three. Some of them are gonna suck and some of them are gonna be hilarious. Uh, but we're gonna come up with some new stuff. I mean, how would a game go if all you can buy is starting items? You know, there's a lot of fun stuff we can do. But nice flash there. Lord Reef still going to go down. Warwick follows, gets the fear. Corky's gonna fall in the mid lane. Stack is really deep underneath this turret. Salik trying to tank up. Does an amazing job. The turret gets damaged down, takes out Jin. Thresh gives credit for it. Now Faffy in trouble. Doesn't have any damage. Straight Jack is just going to continue. Auto her down. She tries to flash back in for a Q to finish off Salik, but it's not enough. In the top lane, Kane inside Pantheon going to fell him. However, the fear from Nog Nog as he's going crazy on this game is going to be able to pick that one up. And we do also have Predator on this Warwick, so his movement speed is going to be massive. Even though he's still on Boots 1, his charge is just insane. Six paths wants in on the Nong Nong. However, the fear going to go down. Warwick gets some extra damage. Is it going to be enough? <laughs> the Knight not going to take Nong Nong out. And the Jarvan falls once again down 0-2. Mm -hmm. As soon as I saw that fight start, I knew that Warwick was going to win because you look at the mana bar from the Jarvan and exactly. notice he did not have enough uh, mana for the flag and drag combo. He couldn't use his CC and Banana is going to come in bot lane for Strength Jacket who uses the Arcane Ship is probably going to be okay. Oh uh, wait, no, Bananas mm. has boots and can tra chase Straight Jacket down. No, Bananas does not have boots, he just have massive movement speed. And Straight Jacket, despite the heal and the flash, going to fall. And Pantheon, just with passive movement speed, is going to take him out. Now it is an Ocean Drake start, so no extra movement speed for the side of blue team with that Predator, Warwick, and Pantheon. Apparently massive passive movement speed is going to want to have that extra movement speed. No wind drakes, but they're obviously going to be the most important in this game. Now now, now I, that you mentioned, I do remember that. Uh, hold on. Uh, Faffy going to be taking a little bit down. Nice knock up from the J4. Brings in the third member. It's a 3v3. Jarvan going to pick up his own kill on the Leona. Warwick ults his way to safety over the wall. That is some level 200 IQ play, and Catinator and Salek are going to have to walk away from this one, only trading one for one. Yeah, at the moment, if he eats a hook, he's probably going... Uh, never mind, Catinator completely whiffed his damage ability, so here to stack's going to be completely okay. Salek I think Sage would need to have seen that hook, because that was a really nice hook from Salek. Yeah, Smooch Bear coming down bot lane, but Catinator's here, and Salek doesn't have enough mana for much, and he might be able to turn Oh, this the damage is massive on the game, but he ults to save you for a moment. However, he might still be taken out, and he is fresh giving credit kill for the Aurelia. Now, with Lord Reeves here, Nong Nong should be following Qs to a minute. Has the rebel for the slow stack, continuing to harass people away. Straight Jacket tries to get in to finish off Nong Nong. He started Predator. He's looking to re engage, but he may choose to pull that one off as Straight Jacket is low. Actually, all three people here are underneath the passive for the Warwick Bloodlust, but it looks like it's going to pull it off and instead go back to landing phase just with triples in the bottom lane for Red Team. Mm -hmm. um, Lord Reeves getting a little bit of poke down onto uh, onto the Jin in the bottom lane right now. Uh, unfortunately, in that last fight, Jin missed his W. Had he landed that, that would have been a kill onto Ezreal, dropping him low enough for the fourth shot. Getting the stun onto Sailor, going to stop the recall from. Uh, the Corky, but the Flay from Salek keeps him going, going in too deep. Fourth shot almost ends Salek, however, a nice hook forces the heal. Leona gets credit for the kill with the nice Zenith. Lord Reeves out of mana. Now trying to get in, uses the ultimate to stun up the Corky. Stack gets the kill, and now it's all on to the Ezreal. He queues off to Nowheresville, and that's going to be a double kill for the Jin. Two, one, and three with a BF Sword Star. Yeah. Excellent play from Faffy, drawing all the aggro. And despite the fact that he did stop Lord Reeves' back, it was almost would have been better for him not to. That would have been a straight 2v2. Banana's going all in on six path, and looks like it could be a kill here. Ooh, force of flash from six path. Oh! Oh! That was a complete turnaround. Six path using the ult. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly Warwick.
from across the map. That's what Predator looks like when you are going at Mach 2. Mach 2, we're gonna see if we can hit Mach 3 before the end of the game as we are just getting started just past the 10 minute mark. Slow on to Smooch Bear, the damage is real. Red buff trying to stack away, getting the slows. Corky comes in, big rocket, gonna deal some good damage. Kane starts the ult, Corky cleans it up. Beautiful combo play here from blue team in the mid lane. I love, though, from that play in the top lane where Jarvan flashes out of his own ult, stands there for a moment, and then just cues back in as Cat and are going to be picked up. I think we're going to see a lot of it this game as kills are plentiful enough. Lord Reeves jumping underneath his own turret, but will that be enough to save him? Nung Nung's here as well. Banana's taking another turret shot. Lord Reeves with the outplay gets a kill, but goes down. Pantheon cleaning that one up. Banana's starting to really stack up this game. Yeah. So people I'm looking to carry right now, uh, Warwick, really, 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 really far ahead at the moment. And that lifesteal is going to be helping him out in the late game. Um, nobody else really super far ahead. Jin has a decent advantage for himself. New exhaust. Straight up all in. up from Faffy. Eclipse not quite going to land, but Nong Nong is here. That's what they needed. The fear to knock him back into the rest of the waiting members. The two players of Blue Team. The flash force out from the Thresh. Jin starts the ultimate. Going to land one. Doesn't even need to land the second. Is Nong Nong 7, 1, and 4 is truly unstoppable. Yeah. So, Nong Nong and Jin, I'm hoping that we get to the point in this game that doesn't snowball so far out of control that we get to see the rage blade Jin on a full 80 build i would love to see that um right i know personally i have had over 1600 ad um on the rage blade Jin, and the thing is that uh, for, for perspective for those of you who don't play adc or heavy ad champions standard ad for an adc is somewhere between you know, 250 to 350, um, depending on which champion you're playing. And to have 1,600 AD, um, and of course you're critting at that point, so double that damage. You're doing well over 2,000 damage. Um, almost uh, almost 3,000, depending on the enemy's armor stats. Um, and that's every single auto attack. Oh, that's going to be Pantheon going in, trying to get the ultimate down. Jarvan the fourth is going to fall, but so is the turret in the top lane. Oh, Nong Nong picking up two nice and stoppable movement from the Corky, however, finds immediate ult from the Warwick, uses the <laughs> exhaust on Pantheon, but it's not enough. The CC is just too much. Yep, and like I was saying in the beginning, that the way I judge team compositions is largely due to the CC. You have three pieces of hard CC versus none incoming from Lord Reeves. Despite the amount of damage he's going to be doing, he's not going to be able to get any of it off. He was CC'd for a good three quarters of that fight, and despite the fact that Bananas had maybe three autos worth of health left, he did, he just never got the chance to land those three autos. Uh, meanwhile, in the bot lane, lots of pressure down onto this bot lane turret. But I'm liking to see these Joram's Fist That's picked just up. That's coming on that. Yeah, probably the tankiest item available to the supports. Um, Joram's Fist also builds into uh, both Steric's Gauge and the uh, Frozen Mallet, I believe. Yes, Frozen Mallet. Oh, so it looks like Cat Nader, though, he's going to be jumping in. Jin may be going down here. Very little health. Nice ult from Leona stops one, but the ult from the... Wow! Cat Nader going to be enough. Plus a nice threshold hook death sentence guarantee for the Jin. Leona going to get it back traded underneath the turret, but the stun's down onto Ezreal Straight Jacket Force to dash, flash, try to avoid everything. Sage is here for the assistance, and but... Oh my goodness. Oh, nice jump there from J4. Gets him underneath the turret, but I don't think with three members here and all damage, it's going to matter. And Nong Nong continues to stack up nine and one in the meantime. Pantheon finished off the Rift Herald and spawned it in the mid lane. So that should be Shelly after she slowly clears things up. There she goes. Charges in, cleans up the turret. So that basically took Smooch Bear from a place of being moderately even to pretty far ahead going toward the Trinity Force on that Aurelia. Uh, Bananas harassing down on two Lord Reeves in the mid lane, dropping the Ignite even. Um, that was a little bit ambitious. Salika posturing forward toward him, but doesn't have a good bit of backup behind him, especially with the Warwick in the jungle there. He probably shouldn't play too far forward. 
Um, Catinator picking up his red buff briefly. Whereas Jin's going to pick up the one on the opposite side. I'm looking to see blue team uh, group in toward the mid lane and push that in, pressure the tower, ward up, and then pull back to the easy objective of the Ocean Drake. Not necessarily the best Drake, but as they are far ahead and look to stay that way, I would like to see them at least clear that one off the map so they might have the potential of an Infernal Drake later. Um, but Catinator's moving into this side of the jungle and dropping a ward onto it, anticipating this strategy for later, and it looks like you might have a duel between the jungler and the mid laner. They're kind of posturing around Catinator and Smooch Bear. Um, however, there's nothing going to come of it as neither of them have the vision on anybody on the enemy team. Ezra used in the bottom lane just to try to push those minions out. Catinator speeding his way through a wall, but he engaged from J4 onto Irelius. Smooch Bear may be able to be cleaned up there, despite the ultimate is going to go down. J4 tries to ult onto Leona, but she's seen a place to save for the moment, and that's going to be path falling. Nong Nong becoming legendary as the uh, Thresh going to finish off the Jin. He is just too much too fast in this game. Salik now looking for another hook onto Faffy. He doesn't have a movement speed. Cat does with that red buff guarantees another kill for red team as they are starting to come back in this game. They're currently down 7,000 gold and Ooh, almost as many, lane. actually as many kills. But Pantheon clearing top lane turrets left and right going to be moving in as the Ezreal Thresh in this mid lane gonna try to harass this turret down. Now, Corky is on an item spike with that Trinity Force, so he has finished one of the most crucial items for himself, and that's going to be critical to try to get back into this game. However, the Irelia on the other side has already two items finished up with the Jarm's Fist and the Boots as well. Yeah, it looks like Nongon's just gonna come in straight behind it and... Oh, nice movement by Ezreal. Would have avoided the fear, but it doesn't matter because Pantheon, the breadwinner, already here to win some bread for his team, get a double kill, and that's gonna take home to the bakery. Mm-hmm. Um, Smooch Bear going into the mid lane and getting some poke damage onto Six Path. Um, Nongon probably just gonna straight up pick up this Drake. Catenator's on the top side of the map. It would be very foolish to contest against a Warwick who is this fed while he is building full damage i would like to see him build a titanic hydra to be honest get some uh, uh now while it is uh, it, it's it's not known so you know he's not going to build any manner of defense however um were i wanting to secure my lead at this point um the thing about building full damage once you have a lead is it gets a little bit dangerous because you can always be CC'd and burst down before you get to make use of your damage. While, hold on, we've gotten all in and never mind. Yeah, oh, wait. Nice package there from Corky Gifts Alive for a moment. Another dash over the wall. Nong Nong chasing him with Predator. Only going to find the Warwick. He's been exhausted. Going to slow down as well. In the meantime, Thresh trying to make an engage in the bottom lane. Salek maybe going down here, sacrificing his life to save his AD carry. As Ezreal with the, uh, the auto attacks, going to walk into an ultimate. But instead, he's jumped himself to save for a moment. But the third shot, not even fourth shot from the Jin. Fourth's not going to land on the Catenator. He's going to clean up Nong Nong. He's shut down the Warwick. He's going to pick himself up too. Can this Kane do it? Dash is in but not gonna find the last hit onto the pain in, or the gin sorry instead both of them are gonna move forward smooch bear as well as here to stack looking for some damage on the bottom lane turret but they're gonna call it off as it is a 2v2 pantheon hard pushing the top lane yeah pa yeah pantheon i was about to bring up is in the top lane and will get pressure down onto that inhibitor turret however leaving gin alone with this means that this should be a free tower um mm. And he'll at least get some DPS down onto it, if not get the whole thing. When the team shows topside, he should know he is okay. And Banana's gonna just straight up blow up the Jarvan and might turn around for seconds. Lord Reed's definitely in danger here. Um, once he drops below 35% HP, the Heartseeker strikes and he can start dealing bonus damage. And at that point, <laughs> He could very easily zero out Lord Reeves and ends up drawing a lot of pressure top lane. Jin, fed as he is, can definitely 1v1 this Ezreal. Um, and it is he is going toward that Infinity Edge second, which is what I wanted to see on the Jin. Um, and it looks oh. like Catenator's going to blow up Jin if he manages. Okay, the stun comes through and he gets shot in the face. Could have gotten the damage down, but wasn't in range for the ultimate. And stack wisely using the fourth shot. Uh, Ruby's going to back out. However, Pantheon may going down here 
Sorry, and he's not even in the fight. He's backed off completely as Salem throws down the ultimate, slowing down Smooch Bear as well as Fappy. Now, Aurelia going to fall Pantheon now, ulting back into the fight. Fappy, very low health, but so are the rest of the members of Blue Team. No one goes down just yet. Lord Reeves comes up for the kill. Nong Nong's here to clean it all up. Reeves picks up double the double fear as well. Nong Nong tries to ace the enemy team, but realizes he can get to 1v2, decides to back out and just push the minions in. Yeah, if he wants to take this fight, though, he definitely has the damage to do it. Uh, however, under tower, as I said, he doesn't have the HP to survive a full-on tower dive at this at this moment. If he had picked up a Titanic Hydra um, to get that HP, um, probably Titanic and what else could he buy that's defensive but offensive at the same time? Frozen Mallet or Starix Gauge? Yeah, definitely Starix Gauge. Um, so pick up Sterix Gauge as well as a uh, as a Titanic Hydra. You get that maximum amount of a of attack dam of attack damage while still getting that HP. Um, we'll probably put Nong Nong in a better position to carry this game because as we saw, Catinator with his full burst build just went all in on Nong Nong and zeroed him out of the last fight before he had a chance to do anything. Uh, so Lord 32 Reed. kills, 221, still 10,000 in the lead for Dan's game. They are doing a really good job, especially Nam Young on this Warwick 13 and 2. Kane, the only one who is able to shut him down so far. And this is a really good thing. This is the last game because my throat and voice is so completely shot. I probably won't be able to speak at all tomorrow. Catinator waiting for Bananas to come into the top lane, but so is Pads here, ready for the engage, and it looks like they're going to wait for Pantheon to start it all off, and they're going to be able to pick up one. But now is the opportunity for a 2v1 against Nong Nong. Catinator gets to slow down. Is it going to be enough? Look at the damage! Nong Nong using the ult to try to get away. Cleanse as well, and by Cleanse, I'm going to have to name uh, Mercurial Scimitar. That's Salik in the mid lane, going to be engaged upon. However, he's trying to get as tanky as possible. Aurelia getting some really good damage. Ignite taking away as well, and Smooch Bear gets credit for that kill. Hmm. The, uh... Wow. So that is a Vampire Acceptor Thresh with a Frozen Mallet. That is a jank build. But I'm liking to see the fact that Jin is about to pick up that Ginsu's Rage Blade. I'm very eager to see how much hate What? Jin's probably gonna die. Uh, yep, and that's gonna be Reeves picking him up with a nice engage from the J4. Leona trying to get the last little bit of damage down, and Faffy picks up his own kill in the bottom lane on the J4, re-engaging onto Lord Reeves as Smooch Bear is here to try to provide the damage, but nice move from Reeves because I'm out of dangerous moment for the moment. Flashing away, Smooch Bear flashes in response, and that's gonna be a kill. The tower doing some damage now to Smooch Bear as he's trying to escape, dashes right back to a minion, only to her own demise. Mm-hmm. The demise is real. So we uh have Starks Gauge. I'm definitely liking this build path from the Aurelia. Starks Gauge picked up, which gives extra tankiness and extra uh, bonus damage when the person takes a certain amount of damage within a short period of time. Um, and the Jarm's Fist stack, so I'm liking this build path from Are Aurelia. Maximum tankiness while maintaining, still within that technical uh, build path that we gave them. So, Essence Reaver, Infinity Edge, and Ginsu's Rage Blade finish for the Jin. Um, the amount of DPS he's going to do with this build is pretty obscene. Bananas going bananas. Um, goes straight in on Reeves and forces out the pack and runs away from six paths. Uh, straight check it here as well. Banana's going to just get a stun to aid in his escape as six paths is going to go straight in on the gym once again. The fourth shot crits so massive that Jin's still going to die as he is stuck between a massive wall from the J4. In the meantime, Straight Jacket going to fall. Bananas trying to escape. Catinator very low health as well. Smooch Bear chases him, but he's through the wall. And that's going to mean Catinator's escape is real as Ruse backs up, looking for an opportunity to re-engage. So far, it is a 2-4-2 two two between these teams as a Mountain Drake has spawned. No team going for the Baron just yet, which really could change the game. Because as an all damage team, it's going to be so much easier to take out the Baron. In the meantime, Smooch Bear goes straight back in, getting a double stun down. This could mean an inhibitor following as Lord Reeves is going to go down. Salic now engaged upon Leona, getting the stun, and that's going to be a double kill over to... I mean, Smooch Bear, sorry. It's credit for that kill. In the meantime, Catinator... 
just played around the dragon and then backed away towards the rest of his base, and they are going to go for the mountain drip rather than the Yeah, I definitely would have liked to see them push in that wave and go for the at least the inhibitor turret. Um if not the inhibitor, give over the mountain drake. Um, it's not as important. Catinator might die for Grom. Oh, would have been nice for Leon to set up Zenith Blade following that, but Nyong Nyong chases and Catinator uses the ultimate. Avoids the ult from Leona. 1v4. Catinator gets the kill on the Nyong Nyong. He's got nowhere left to run except the wall because it's Kane and he almost escapes, but it is going to be shut down. So many spells used by Blue Team. J4 starting a slow push in the bottom lane, giving an opportunity for Red Team to defend this bottom lane turret. Yeah. How it, uh, and look the amount of HP that fourth shot did. And forcing out the heal from Straight Jack. And I just want to take a quick look at Jin's AD. Right? Oh, nice play there from the Thresh. Burns the flash on the Jin. J4 comes in, throws down the ult. It's the battle pit of it all. And the AoE from Reese. Not enough to take anyone down. Is the fourth shot from Jin coming in huge now. Two picked up. Smooch Bear getting credit for the second one. Exhaust underneath the turret. Forces the Aurelia to back out. However, Jin starts the ultimate. Now, one shot's gonna miss. Two shots gonna miss. Reeves is baiting it in. Smooch Bear goes in. However, Lord Reeves picks up a double kill. But Jin gets the setup for his final shot and takes out the Corky. Catinator's up, and I'm assuming Jin's gonna get one shot right here. That's just, just my personal opinion. Oh, wait, nope. Yep, here it is. It's always when you least expect it. See him back oh. away. And Catinator replaces Jin. And suddenly we have a new hero on the map. Where did Jin go? It's suddenly Jin. Yep. Everybody likes playing against assassins, guys. Yeah. That That's basically my loading, <laughs> my, my screen the entire game when the enemy team has a Shaco or a uh, or a cane or something like that they just appear out of nowhere either out of invisibility or come through the wall and you're like well i guess i'm dead right. we are nearing the 30 minute mark red team has held on to their base very nicely does the warwick ever fall off that is the question. 14 and 4 re engaging onto the Pantheon. Nom Nom's here as well. The CC is going to hold him in place and they're going to take him out and keep the cane alive. Catman feeling off of the Raptors and now the Baron in the sights of Frankers. Yeah, the thing is, is that Nom Nom's build falls off super hard because he gets one shot. Um, if he were tanky, he'd be doing excellent right now. If he had a little bit of HP under his belt, like Aurelia does, while she doesn't have the massive scoreline that he ha he does, she's actually deal doing a lot more work in these later to mid game. Ooh, smooch Bear trying to get damage onto the Baron, jumps in, dashing through enemy members, and Kane's gonna lock it up, so Red Team does get the Baron Ezreal ult across one as Fafi, super tanky, hard to kill, does use the... Jarm's fist finish into Steric's gauge to grant a huge shield. Only going to lose two so far. Red Team now forced to back off. Aurelia did go down, but Jin here trying to clean up. Yeah, uh, straight up fight right now. Jin wins. Um, hold on. He's building attack speed. Oops. More crit. Doesn't, act doesn't actually give AD. Um, he probably should have gone lifesteal here anyway. A, uh, a death's dance at this point is definitely the best thing to do. Catinator is uh, just completely one-shotting him, but if he survives, and yeah, he's... oh, he didn't die. Very yeah, smart. Catinator lives for the moment underneath half health. The cane's super low. Reeves does have the ultimate available. Rockets through three, trying to slow people down. However, the cleanse from Yong Yong means a guaranteed kill. Jin doesn't even matter. Force shotting from a distance. Cat, I mean, sorry, the Ezreal ultimate, Arcane. Uh, barrage going to go through three pushes stack very low so they're going to be backing up Aurelia three pushing in the bottom lane doesn't have teleport to join in this should be mid tower for red team yeah Jin should uh, should build death stance um, gives him life steal and once you have the Ginsu's prop um, you're going to be dealing so much damage that 10% of a thousand damage you're dealing for a lot already you've got a uh, 
What is that? Not Warlord's Bloodlust. It's the one that replaced it. Fleet footwork. Pantheon coming down in the mid lane. Gonna be slowing down the Thresh. May fall after all of the tankiness. Not going to matter. Even build a Blade of the Ruin King to try to burn through some of Leona's tankiness. As I'm here to stack. Trying to get in range for the fourth shot. Oh, just doesn't get it onto the Ezreal. In the meantime, Kane around the corner. Gonna get jumped on. And that's gonna be the Leona ultimate wasted. But doesn't matter. The CC chain from Blue Team too strong. Now with five members pushing in on the three, may be able to take out this mid lane turret. As it does prove, Minion's not going to land. Aurelia ult, however, is going to take out the Ezreal. And now, with the rest of the team, that's going to be mid lane turret going to fall. Nibir turret following. Lord Reeves trying to play defensively on the Nexus turret. Here to stack, puts him low out the snares. There, so is the ultimate. And that's going to be the curtain call for Reeves. And maybe the end of this game for Team Dan's game. Yep, that's kind of what it, what is what I anticipated happening. The out CC and wow, that was a lot of DPS coming back through. I was expecting to just straight up one shot from the Jarvan, but did not have enough damage to make it happen through the heal. So Jin turns around with a one shot of his own. <laughs> Definitely on it. You see the Jin with the Ginsu's Rage Blade. Always, it's my current favorite build path in the game because it's so funny. Like when you just one shot their AD carry and they're like, dude, what did you happen? How has what happened? All right, let's go ahead and put some music on. And uh, Reeves is sneaky, then he is choking like Cloud9. Ouch. Ouch. Warwick has Shiv. Isn't Static Shiv an item built in damage? Or is that attack speed? Huh? Mola Molafon yeah. is saying that we're with yeah. Shiv and that's an attack speed, not. It, it, is, it is It is an attack speed item. To be honest, the mm. thing is, is though, like, I don't know if we penalize them for it because it's actually, like, terrible. Like, it's not. It doesn't help him at all. Well, what we may have to do is call off fun third games if people are going to cheat and play some builds that or uh, buy items that aren't supposed to be purchased. We kind of ran into this issue a little bit last time. We played uh, uh, not Ultimate Bravery. Thank you. Uh, thank you to myself for remembering. Um, but uh, if you guys didn't have fun, that's okay. Uh, it's, it was a test. We are test rolling it. Um, uh, let's see here, actually. Take it out on the pole that I'm building right now. And, uh, there you go. If you want to make your voice known, you can, uh, use the pole in the, on the stream, uh, to let me know whether or not you hated that. And, uh, if you did, you can always leave me a comment as well. We're playing with ideas for third games, guys, to change things up a little bit, so... Uh, and yes, banana corrupting potions do also count as well as the buffing potions at the end of the game that most people buy to add to their own AD, tanky, or whatever, or their own stats. So. Yeah. All right. So are we doing MVPs and honorable mm -hmm. mentions for this? Uh... Uh, we will, but I won't count it for the official MVPs and honorable mentions lists. All right. Um, just because we, sh we should comment on some of the fun things that went on. It was surprisingly a lot more of a normal um, champion picks than I was truly expecting when I came up with the idea. So. All right. So for Team Frankers, we've got MVPs. I would give in our honorable mention to Reeves, both for creative pick um, and excellent early game play. We saw uh, Smooch Bear really take advantage of the Ari and force her to AFK last game because she didn't respect uh, Ari, uh, Aurelia's mobility and ability to all in in the early game. Uh, Reeves did the exact opposite. He punished really hard in the early game with ranged auto attacks and his Phosphorus Bomb putting Aurelia really low, forcing her back, and getting an advantage for himself in lane, as well as I'm loving the creative pick, because the, the thing was, you all have to build AD, and Reeves is like, okay, I'll build, I'll take the champion that builds AD and turns it into AP. Screw your rules. Um, so I really enjoy that. Stick it to the man, Reeves. And then Catnator for basically carrying the rest of the game and making it last as long as he did. Um, 
taking out both Nong Nong and Jin in the same sort of like like in same team fight. Sometimes he would manage to kill Nong Nong, who was by far the most fed member on the team, and then kill Jin, who ended up being even more fed in the late game and doing a lot more damage too. So MVP definitely that Nader, um, using his cane incredibly well. Um, let's go with MVPs and honorable mentions for the winning team now. For Team Dan's game, we've got... I want to give it to Jin, but I have to give it to Nong Nong. Um, so, honorable mention over to the Jin. Um, lots of damage. <laughs> um, unfortunately, he did end up building that eight, uh, attack speed item... I feel like the game was decided at that point and it wasn't the ideal item for the slot. So it's not like he was cheating and going for an ideal item. It's like, oh, well, you banned out this, so I'm going to buy it anyway. Um, not the best thing for that item slot right now. Probably going for a rapid fire cannon, which helps with poke damage, helps with pick off. But at that point, he really needed a death stance. Um, however, playing those fights pretty well, especially in the early game. I noticed this is something I do with Jin all the time, is when a target's getting low and they're definitely gonna die, holding your fourth shot to where you basically smite the enemy champion, guarantee getting yourself the kill, get some more gold and get yourself more snowballing. Do, um, thing is, in solo queue, KS whenever you can. I know it's a horrible thing to say, but you know, just steal your team's kills because odds are they're going to feed anyway unless you're prone to feeding then don't do that uh, but get yourself as far ahead as you can play selfishly because your team's always boosted um, anyway so uh, MVP goes over to Nong Nong despite the really weird janky build that he ended up doing was everywhere on the map literally everywhere he would like gank mid and then suddenly appear top lane somehow and kill and kill two people and then he'd be bot lane you're like how did warwick get bot lane i have no idea how he got top lane in the first place i'm still trying to figure that out but he was just everywhere affecting the map snowballing his, in his team's favor so he gives it so he gets the mvp for early game map pressure um yeah there we go all right, so thank you guys. I, my voice is so completely shot. I'm probably going to try to say nothing tomorrow at work as I'm probably going to be working a 12-hour day as per usual. Um, but we are going to do... Thank you, uh, Cookie, saying that he enjoyed watching that one. Um, we are going to jump over... Wow, everything minimized. Hello. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Um, let's go ahead and pull some of these back up. All right, we are going to be doing... If you guys want to, you can join me in it just for a little bit. Uh, I think I've been following a number of different other shoutcasters on Twitch and I'm going to try to do some raids on their channels if any of them are live when they are doing that. Let me go ahead and roll over to the lobby. Um, and what we're going to do is raid Black Twitch League just for fun. They are currently sitting at 19 viewers, which isn't much, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and post the link. However, you can join if you want to be in a part of this mini raid, um, but don't say anything just yet. We're, we're going to give it a moment until something happens. And then if you have the Daisy black, MVP, black. we may make that as a comment if you are a subscriber. So as long as none of them if not, captured, we'll probably switch something else. Like the Zachary, the Chogat, then this guy is a solo caster, but he is currently engaged. casting an actual series called Black so Twitch now, League, um, a series which I believe is in the their uh, so playoffs. Yeah, tiebreaker for second season playoffs. I think their um, finals is this weekend. Ramem gets the flank on good. the hunt. It's propped up. Edwin is looking to be the target just there, but right, he's let's not going to be able to get anything. Black Knight uh, Drake knocks up the Choga. Flash, but so gets OP. interrupted by the rupture. So. There goes the hook. Where's the follow-up? And no, no, not I'll just start yet. OP. Start Here, here's uh, an idea for maybe next next uh, damage right there. So that is not looking next too uh, week's fun game. game. Specs is now here. You and, and I come up with three build dark. packs, is and they can be weird. The and then the, the, the people wave. have to choose Question the champions they think will work best with those Now they're gonna be able to get the engage right here. So you don't just get to buy anything. You have this set constrained build path, but you get to choose the champion who would most benefit from it. 
So I'm gonna give somebody six tiers. Just tier of the gods. <laughs> six tiers all the way. Well, yeah. definitely feel free to give suggestions uh, in the chat um, uh, or the Discord as well.